right? What freedoms are most important to you? How would you write your freedom book? Chances are many of the freedoms that we enjoy today we would not have if America had not been founded as a secular nation based on constitutional church-state separation. That story is little, is little known, but it begins in 17th, 18th century, sorry, 17th century New England with, with uh, King James here, who was the only one at that time who really had freedom, for he was head of both the church and the state and could do whatever he wished legally. And, but he had some opposition despite the fact uh, that he had the ultimate freedom. There were proponents of freedom for all who lived in the countryside, who rejected um, unfreedom, uh, institutional Christianity, and believed that all should have equal freedoms of conscience and religion. The king did not like these folks, and he actually had tried, he would send out his spies and his armed men to hunt them down the countryside and, and try to bring them to order. And eventually, he did catch some of these folks who would become known as Baptists, that were his biggest troublemakers, and he threw them in Nougat Prison, which is the Alcatraz of its day, of our day. And in, Al in Nougat, you went in and you didn't come out. And so uh, the Baptists were placed, put in the prison, and we don't know when they died. In the New World, in 1630, some Puritans from the old, the old world came to Boston, which was not as idyllic as this image might indicate. There was not much freedom in early Boston. Roger Williams came from the old world to Boston in 1631, early, early on. He was a renowned gentleman in England, and he came to Boston seeking actual freedom in the New World. He did not find it in Boston. His views of uh, freedom for all did not sit well with Bostonians, and he was tried and, con and convicted. Others were also tried and convicted. This is a Baptist who was arrested because he was holding an unauthorized meeting in Boston. He's been given 40 lashes here. The story goes that after he was lashed 40 times, he said, it, you have hit me as with roses. Williams, meanwhile, had been convicted. He was banished. Um, he was going to be sent to England, but he escaped to the wilderness where he met some of his native friends who he had befriended earlier. In the course of spending time with them, he approaches land from his native friends to create a new colony, which we know is Rhode Island. And the colony of Rhode Island was very different from the other colonies. The other colonies were theocratic. And Rhode Island was set up to be a colony for all persons. Uh, anyone could come and have freedom of conscience and religion in Rhode Island. Fast forward a long time until the 1760s and 1770s. In Virginia, Baptists were still being persecuted by the state church, which in Virginia was the Anglican church. And the authorities had to approve meetings, and Baptists the, the, Baptist would refuse to get approval from the authorities. And so they were oftentimes persecuted and jailed simply because they would not get authority from the, uh, the state itself to meet. In jail, Baptists would preach, crowds would gather. Folks would come around, men would come around and try to make so much noise that the preaching couldn't be heard. It's estimated that about half of Baptists in the 1760s and 1770s spent time in prison. This picture is 1778. It depicts a real event that happened, a, a Baptist being dragged out of a meeting house from an unauthorized meeting by Christian thugs of the state and pretend almost drowned in a stream in, near the church. 1778, two years after the Declaration of Independence. Baptists were not, and other dissenters, were not satisfied with just freedom from Britain. They were all Americans, all to have actual freedom of conscience and religion as well. In the petitions you see, many the Baptists sent in tens of thousands of petitions demanding freedom, actual freedom, from in the Virginia colony. They worked with Thomas Jefferson, who over who presented a bill to the House to, to in Virginia to give freedom to all citizens. It took years to pass, 
It finally passed in 1786 and is known as the Virginia Statute for Religious Liberty, which in turn led into the Constitutional Convention the next year, 1787, Philadelphia. In the Constitutional Convention, the Founding Fathers, although most of them had been born in state churches or establishment churches, had no conversation about religion being a part of the new nation, which was quite remarkable, actually. In the Constitution, Article um, 6, Section 3, there is no religious test clause. Unlike other Western nations at the time, anyone could serve in federal office, not just Christians. It was scandalous in much of Europe, actually, at the time. In our First Amendment to the Constitution, are religion clauses that prohibit church and state from working together. America was founded as a secular nation at a time in which no other nation had done this. Rhode Island did provide a model long before the First Amendment was established. After, after churches that were separated from the colonial era and now the United States, great revivals of religion uh, spread, broke out. In upstate New York, in parts of the Northeast at large, many of those revivals led into and really energized the abolitionist movement in that era. And our final slide here is a picture of a, a postal mail deliverer. Some Christians who have been part of the state churches and therefore privileged over others wanted to make America Christian. They were upset it and found it as a secular nation. Baptists resisted. They tried to make America Christian by forcing the federal government to make Sunday a holy day. Thanks to Baptists, that did not happen. 